now let's go, let's hurtle right, right back because we'd got up to Carmarthen and we'd got up to Rob's already in Take That. So where did you, what, what happened? Where did what, the land lie from Carmarthen? What, what happened, happened there? Carmarthen, I'm now with, with, um, with, with Haven Holidays. Warner Holidays in 1993 started to take on um, major, um, what was it? Stately uh, Homes. Stately Homes. Stately Homes. Wonderful for adults only, and uh, they were they were moving personnel around. The top man at uh, Haven Holidays was Nigel Hudson, Nigel Hudson, and his his second in command was Tony Trafford. Tony Trafford became the top man. He moved on to to Warner, and he said to Nigel, he said, "I'm not going to poach your personnel except for one." He said, because he's dead right for one. Well, can I take Pete Conway with me? And uh, Nigel said, yeah. He said, because he, he, he's got his holiday places to look after. Yeah. He didn't want to. He, so he said, yeah, he started from scratch with Warner. And uh, so I then moved from Warner. No, I, I moved from Haven to Warner in 1993 when they opened. And I went to Al Alverson Hall. I opened Alverson Hall. Alverson Hall. And then I went from there to Hereford. To Home Lacey. Home Lacey. And then while I was there, I got a great boss called Roger Graves. The lovely Roger. R Roger was wonderful. And he was my mate, as long as being my boss. And he pulled me in the office one day. He said, we're opening this new place in Sherwood Forest. He said, and uh, I'm going as general manager. I said, I'll take it. I'm coming with you. And he <laughs> said, yes. And then it'd be 1999. 1999. 1999. It was indeed. Yeah. Um, they opened Thorsby Hall, wonderful place, uh, magnificent building, and uh, what a pleasure. Yeah. And I, so I went there, and then I was there <laughs> until 2002. And you lived in one of the turrets, didn't you? I did, yeah. yeah, I did upstairs. You had a fabulous uh, yeah, apartment Yeah, I had a there. flat. Flat, in, yeah. Yeah, in the uh, tourist. We had a few celebs in that flat, I know, straight away. De didn't you have Des O'Connor in that flat? Des was there, yeah. yeah. Des was there. Tom O'Connor, is he from? Tom, Tom yeah. Yeah, yeah, Tom. The, yeah, a few. Well, we had a lot of big acts coming through Thorsby, a lot Great of very big acts, and they were yeah. all mates of yours already. Yeah, exactly, I knew them from way back. Yeah. And then, in 2002, and I'm wondering, I'm seeing a lot of young people coming into the business. And my sell-by date so is just coming around me, thinks. <laughs> and I was thinking, anyway, they wanted me to go in 2002. My boss, Tony Trapper, came to see me and he wanted me to go to um, Lowestoft. Corton or Corton. Gunton. Yeah, Corton. Corton. And wanted me to go to Corton, which is a little bit out of the way. Um, and I could see the business changing a little bit. I didn't want to go to Corton. They, they, they hadn't got anybody in there um, to do my job. And it was sort of, y y your time's up now. Well, they were kind of getting rid of your position, really, weren't yeah, they, they, I were. think? Yes, so they, they were. So they were moving you to court and so you could keep your position. They were going to keep that old Yes, yes. But yeah. really, Thorsby was moving on to new ideas. Ideas, yeah. Rightly or wrongly. Wrongly. Uh, <laughs> as it happens. Said loudly. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I saw it as a good time. I thought there's a possibility. The time's going to come when they're going to say, thanks very much, Pete. So you'd go before they said it. And I thought before they... Uh, so I, had, I think I had four leaving parties, which is people that couldn't make one came yeah. to the other one. You had quite a few. <laughs> and it was, it was... And I remember sitting down and telling you... Yeah. It was quite a day, wasn't it? Don't go there. <laughs> Oh dear, you can oh. drink your tea, you're all right. I like your PC cup, very nice. I like that, do you? Oh yeah. It's a good one that, isn't it? Yes, Pete Conway cup. So, talk me, tell me about some stories from like Matt Monroe from those days. Matt was very special. Uh, we spent a lot of time together. And one of the, the nicest things that happened to me, and the nice things happened to me in show business, it's, it's a nice business with nice people. 
And I used to drive Matt around at night time. He used to leave his car. He used to, have, he, 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 he used to lose it. So he'd forget where he parked it. Did he have a nice car? Yeah, he did. He had a Rolly. And um, anyway, one night we were going out in the car. It's one of my favourite memories of show business in my time during that particular era of cabaret. And I've got him in the car with me. And I've got Matt Munro sitting by the side of me, and I've got a green Capri, I remember, and we're going into Manchester. And Matt said to me, I'm going to, he said, do you remember the television show Vanderbilt? And the opening sequence tune was called Eye Level. He said, that's called Eye Level. I said, yeah. He said, well, I've got two different lyrics for the same tune. And I'm going to record it. He said, and, and I'm sitting driving, take into account. And I've got Matt Munro. Now, normally when Matt Munro isn't in the car, I've got Matt Munro on my CDs. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, it was tapes. Yeah, it tapes. Was, it was then. cassette tapes then. Yeah. And uh, I've got Matt singing to me. Now, now he says, he said, and I'm going to sing this song. So he sang two different lyrics to the same tune. God. Sitting by the Live. Side. Live. Live. So now the, the sound that I normally hear coming out of my speakers, is now singing to me by the side of me. So did he record that? Did he, did so, he go anywhere? Did he do anything? So he sang, And I cried, and I cried, With laughter in my eyes, And the world seemed to fade away. And I cried, and I cried, And I was captured, don't you know? She'd have to stay. Bum, 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 oh, bum, wow. bum, bum. And he sang that. He said, I think I like that one. Of the two, the two lyrics, I prefer that one. He said, I think, and then I heard it later on, uh, on the, radio. the radio and uh, I don't know whether it was a hit or not but it was a great but he did record it and it did, he did come record out it. Oh, yes wow. it did and I, I wondered because it, it affected me and I thought because Matt, Matt had passed away um, I heard it after he passed on and I used to think I wonder how Mickey thinks it she could be ironing now couldn't she and and now suddenly Matt's singing on, on the, the radio you know, it's a, a strange thing about our business well, I mean, you must be in your house and in Conway Cottage and yeah. in the car and Rob comes on and... Oh, that's... All the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. I get a big kick out of that, to you be quite do. honest. You yeah. must do. I really do. I think that's wonderful. Oh, it is, yeah. Well, I, I walk into shops. I don't wonder where they put it on special. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? You know, yeah. <laughs> here I am, so they've, put, they've got it ready. Yeah. Everyone's <laughs> it ready. In, just in case it comes in. In Stoke on Trent. It has happened, actually. I'm sure it yeah. has, but not just in Stoke on Trent. I mean, mm. even I remember at, at the Warners that we would play Take That and even yeah. me and the band, we learned a lot of Take That and, and yeah. love songs yeah. so that we could do them because Great. I think at Thorsby a lot of guests used to come to Warners because they loved it but a lot of guests did come back to see you and come because it was Robbie Williams' dad that was working yeah, there. Yeah. Absolutely, 100%. I, yeah, I can think. I, I was Pete Conway for many, many years and I became Robbie's dad. He did, yeah. So that's all right, nothing yeah. wrong with that. But so from leaving that structure of, of doing the holiday parks, holiday camps, holiday centres that bit more upmarket and adult Tony Warners. Then I know that you went off, certainly I once saw you doing panto in Stoke with Johnny Wilkes. Oh, that, that was another string to the bow. That was fabulous. I, I'd never done panto. It was on your bucket list, I think. And it, it was, was, it, oh, it was definitely it. on the bucket list, yeah. It, yeah. And Johnny, who's done panto in Stoke for many, many donkey's years, invited me to become Baron, no, he wasn't Baron Ardoff, it was uh, Councillor Fitzwarren. Councillor Fitzroy, Fitzroy Alison, and, was it Alison Wonderman? No, it was um, Dick Whittington. Dick Whittington. Dick and it was great fun, and I really did enjoy it. Yeah, I came to watch you were great. It, it, was, uh, it was just, it, it's what it is. It's the hardest... Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> oh, yeah, nobody ever says... <laughs> you know, that's the thing about doing panto. If you ever go out anywhere, somebody say, I'm doing panto. Oh, no, you're not. Everybody <laughs> yeah, do, yeah. yeah, every time. It was incredible. Really a lot of fun. But... Genuine people don't realise how hard work it is. Two and three shows a day. Two and three shows a day. Yeah. And you've got to make it look as though it's spontaneous. And it's the first show. And it's the first show. Mm. And it, it, you get lifted by the kids, of course you, you do. You do, but it's, it's draining, isn't it? it, it Especially is. well, six, seven, eight weeks. Uh, yes, indeed. And, for, for, and people don't realise that's all you do. You do panto and sleep. Yeah. A panto, get up and go back to the theatre. And you can't go partying at night, you really, can't do anything. you've got to look you, after you, your voice. You cannot do anything. Yeah. Mm. All you do is panto and sleep for yeah. the duration. So really, after the pantomime and after all these amazing things that you'd done and people that you'd worked with, 
Then I'm not going to say you retired, but you did take a little bit of a back seat. You, you know, a few holidays, got married again, and yeah. And then, what's really been the next thing for you? Was it for me seeing you? It was doing the, the shows with Rob, doing the world tour. But was I, there anything in between the pantos before yeah, you started I, doing? I, I did that. I, I was, these little uh, world tours. Yeah, these little world tours <laughs> that you do. Um, I did a lot of after dinner things during the interim after I left Warner. And then Rob has become a big star. And I went to see him quite a few times doing shows in stadiums and places. Albert Hall. Uh, yeah, the Albert. Yeah, One great. of your favourites, I think. Uh, not the Albert. I didn't do the Albert. No, but you, you went to see it though, didn't you? Uh, no, I was working. I was uh, oh, th- that, the, the night of the Albert. Where were you then? Thorsby. Oh, we were. <coughs> yeah. And, we must uh, have watched it afterwards. <laughs> yeah, we watched the show then. Yeah. Um, I went to... Uh, th- this was a big change. This is Rob, spontaneous Rob. I was going to see him. He was doing the Palladium. The Palladium. Would you believe that? I mean, we, we, we all grew up. That, that's the mecca of yeah. our business. I'm not lucky enough to have done the Palladium. Well, that's... Uh, fool. It, it is a matter of luck. So much luck yeah, involved in this business. And what happened to me, I was out this, it was a Thursday night, tomorrow night, Friday, Robbie Williams, one night only at the London Palladium, and I'm going, I'm going to be there. And on the Thursday, I was in a local pub in Stoke. And it, I remember at the time, it was just after 10 o'clock, my phone went and it was Rob. And Rob said to him, he said, do you know, do nothing till you hear from me. I said, I know it very well. I said, never sang it, but I know it. He said, do you want to do it tomorrow night in the second half of the show at the Palladium? You're not going to say no, are you? I said, yeah. <laughs> so, so he said, um, bring your dicky bow, bring your dress suit when you come down. I'm going anyway, I've got tickets. So I put the phone down and I'm with my mates and I said, um, I think I better go home. I've got a song to learn. He said, why? I said, I'm doing the Palladium tomorrow night. <laughs> and he can imagine me like my mates. He said, oh, I'm sure you are. Yeah, well, I am. So anyway, I went to London the following day as per plan. And I did something that I always fancied I wanted to do. In my, my, little, my, my little tiny mind, I always wanted to get in a taxi and say, the London Palladium Police Station. So you did? I did say, yeah. And I got off the train and I said, London Palladium Police Station. Oh, thank you. So off I went, went in in the afternoon. Now this was mind-blowingly daft. We're doing the show, it's been televised at night time. We got the key, we didn't do a rehearsal. We got a key, Dave Hartley was playing piano. Great band. And oh, wonderful, big band, huge, yeah, big orchestra. Band. And he, I, I walked on, Robert had three days rehearsal for the show or whatever it was with, with the band. And uh, I went on stage in the afternoon, he went ding. Do nothing till you hear from He said, then we'll walk up and down those steps. Then you'll come on from here. And I said, right. Then I went. And then we came in at night time to watch. And I sat in the audience in the balcony watching the show for the first half. And at half time, I went and got changed. I thought, I said, this is ridiculous. This is the Palladium. <coughs> and I walked on and sang. And we, we walked up the steps as per plan said a few things, walked back down again, finished it off. When I walked on stage, all the audience stood up. I've had a, I've had a standing ovation leaving. I've never had one coming <laughs> on. And they carried on standing up all the way through the whole song. Amazing. And they were still standing and clapping at the end. Then I walked off and got changed. I went back and sat down again. <laughs> now, not many people have done that. But that was probably a turning point, wasn't it, for putting you in the shows? Well, it, it went so well. It was well accepted by everybody. And then Rob said to me afterwards, he said, I'm doing a world tour. He said, do you fancy coming and doing it, uh, this swing swing thing with me? Your favourite music. And my favourite music. And his too. Yeah, Frank Sinatra. And uh, we, I went on tour with him. So that started, so I've toured with him ever since for years. So that started. Years and years doing world we, tours. We've done, we've been everywhere. We Private went to, parties and functions, oh, secret, yeah, top yeah, secret yeah, shows. So a lot of secret shows yeah. for people that don't know about. Mm.